All right, here's a good game of Netrunner uh, from my archives I found. The reason I never posted it before is because the autofocus on the camera wasn't properly disabled. So at certain points during the video, uh, the cards might go out of focus. You'll just have to deal with that. I apologize. Uh, so on the right, there's me. I'm playing Kate. And on the left, Jinteki Personal Evolution. Uh, the deck that I'm playing is m pretty much the same as the famous Kate Ottman Data Sucker deck, except I've switched out the Ottmans uh, in favor of the sort of default uh, icebreaker. So Gordian Blade, Snowball, and Femme Fatale are the three icebreakers uh, that I'm using. Yeah, that's right, the only Sentry Breaker is Femme. Watch out. On the left, it's Personal Evolution Jinteki. He's going for the kill. He's looking for uh, some Ronin Neural EMP action. Or at least that's what I've encountered uh, in the past. So let's see how this game goes. The game begins. What will Jinteki do? Probably install some neural katanas. That looks like one. And he takes two credits. I guess that gives him seven, so if he reses the neural katana on an R&D run, he cannot afford a snare. I'm just going for money right away. Install Desperado. Sure gamble. Sure gamble Desperado. That's a better idea. Draw a card. And... something. Big risk, gonna run HQ on the last click. I'm just gambling here, it's not a snare. It's a Chimera, okay. That's actually not good for me. <laughs> At least I know it's not installed. And I got a credit from uh, Desperado for that. At least I should have. Okay, so we're going to install Pro Context, which is MVP this game for sure. Because every time I get uh, net damage from Jinteki, I gotta redraw my hand up so I don't die. And when I do so, I'll just get money alongside that, which is pretty. I, I think Pro Contact is really the best card against Jinteki, period. At least Personal Evolution Jinteki. Oh, uh, so you see that card I just threw away there? Um, I make proxies, I have blank white cards, and I just write on them with Sharpie and sometimes, and they're in opaque sleeves. Uh, obviously I don't do that during a tournament, but at game night, you know, when I want to have a card in multiple decks that I only have three copies of, uh, I'll make those proxies like that. Yeah, there's Katie Jones, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> yeah, if anyone's got any extra Katie Joneses they want to send me, uh, that'd be cool. You know, it'd be nice if they had, like, some alt art Katie Jones coming up in, like, the, you know, the next season of Netrunner. Okay, a clone ship. That's pretty good, because if one of my programs goes down... Uh, out of my hand from net damage, I can just install it, no problem. Okay, here he goes. I, he hasn't resed any ice, but he set up a remote server with two things in it. I'm basically guessing uh, Hokusai Grid is the only upgrade he's using. Uh, I 
can just sort of tell. Right? It's just personal evolution. It's going to be Hokusai Grid. And then what is on it? Probably an agenda at this point. Uh, you know, because let's say there's a neural in front of it, and I try to run there with no icebreakers. Uh, the neural hits me for three, Hokusai Grid for four, and if it's an agenda, that's five. And then one neural EMP. Oh, it wasn't an agenda. It was a pro... Uh, private contracts. <laughs> Professional contact on the right, private contract on the left. PC, both sides. So that's a lot of money for a Jinteki, but I got some monies too. Really, my problem here is that I'll draw cards such as Sure Gamble. And since I don't want them net damaged into the trash, uh, I want to use them. I also don't want to have to discard them. Uh, and then I just, you know, I want to draw into the cards I really need with pro context. So I just sort of have to play what I draw, you know, any piece of the rig that comes up until I get the piece I'm looking for. But it's really not too bad. I mean, yeah, I'm going a little slow here, uh, slower than I'd like. I could technically draw a program and throw one out without caring because I have a clone chip. So I could overdraw a little bit to go deeper faster. Alright, so now we get a El Gordo Gordian Blade. That's going to help, especially if there's chums out there. Got big money from Katie Jones, forthcoming. Okay, so that's an upgrade he's installing there. Probably a Hokusai grid, of course. Um, he likes to install his upgrades in front of R&D instead of behind it, which is actually... I recommend it. Uh, I've come around on it. Uh, because that way you won't forget it's there. A lot of times people install it behind R&D like the book says you should, the rule book, and either player will forget it's there. The court might forget it's there and then be upset that they forgot to res it and do the one damage. Uh, the runner might forget it's there. Both players forget, they forget to access it, which is, you know, just, it's not how you're supposed to, it's broken rules, you're not supposed to do that. You, you, you must access it. It's just a matter of which order. You know, do you access the card on top of R&D first, or do you access uh, the Hokusai Grid first? Okay, so, I had tons of money, I installed a Femme, my Sentry Breaker, so now I'm not afraid to run anymore. Uh, I don't really need the Barrier Breaker. The only barrier Jinteki has is Wall of Thorns. Uh, I did see a Chimera, but if he ends the run, I'm, I don't care, right? It doesn't hurt me. I need to make him spend his huge pile of money resing ice. So I picked the first ice, which I'm guessing is Neural Katana, because that's the ice you want to install at the beginning of the game. I run. It's an Enigma. I have a Gordian Blade, which is great. Um, so I'm going to probably spend two credits, because I don't want to lose my click in case I get snared and have to remove a tag or something. Um, I continue. He chooses two res. His Neural Katana. It is a Neural Katana. I guessed properly. Um, now, the th it's good to fem the Neural Katana because it is strength 3, which means that to break it with fem would actually cost 3 credits. Putting the fem token on it saves me 2 credits per run. There is a Hokusai Grid and a Fetal AI. So I took a damage from the Fetal AI. Two fe two, 3 damage from the Fetal AI, 1 from the Hokusai Grid. Uh, I'm going to trash the Hokusai Grid with my money. And then with my remaining click... Uh, I'm probably going to pro contacts to get my hand back up, which has been damaged heavily. Yeah, get out of your Okasai grid. Okay, pro contacts. I got one card in my hand. If he's got two neural EMPs, it's game over. I lose. He does not have two neural EMPs. I hope, right? Right? Please don't. You can tell just by how many minutes are left in this video uh, that he doesn't have two neural EMPs. Alright, he had something installed and he advanced it three times. That could be a Ronin. Uh, a Ronin on top of a Hokusai grid. 
So let's let's use pro contacts and get our hand back up to strength here. So we don't die. Okay, draw four. Boom, done. Oh, and that's the date. I took a data sucker token there. That was from, I forgot it, from the R&D run on the previous turn. Oh, he scores a fetal. I'm fine with that. That costs him a lot. If you make uh, the corp Jinteki score a fetal AI, that's a good thing. Costs them a lot of money. Costs them a lot of clicks. They don't get to pull the damage off on you. Just great all around. Oh, so, so when I brought the Femme out originally, it was a test run. <laughs> um, this is an actual install of the Femme, for reals. And I am going to put the token uh, back in the same place I put it originally. Save two credits in every R&D. Not too bad. I'm highly doubting uh, Jinteki's going to have any big ice really worth femming. Um, and that's why I chose an early time. Ran R&D, saw chump. Pro context. So basically now I'm just going to try to hit R&D. Right? If I can keep him from drawing uh, any agendas, I can take a minimal amount of damage, what, at most a snare, at most one agenda's worth, at most a fetal. Right? If I take the damage, I'll stop running. I'll draw back up with pro contacts. Um, I'm just going to lock this down. Okay, so he's private contracting again to get his monies back. The thing is, as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't matter how much money he has. Um, as long as he has, you know, four, he can snare me. He's got five. Oh, and he's installing more ice. That's good. That cost him quite a bit. Okay, so I put down that uh, self-modifying code. So that doesn't really cost me anything. And in case a barrier shows up, uh, I can go use my money to deal with it. I replenish my hand, and I put money on Katie Jones. So my HP, which is my hand size, and my economy are replenished. Um, ready to run. Two data sucker tokens. Got pretty much everything. going to ice up R&D even more. I guess that's his bread and butter, right? If I can, if I can run R&D every turn, which I could have uh, with the previous ice layout, then it probably would have been a lock in my favor. So making it more expensive for me to run R&D and also using that economy he got uh, from the private contracts, putting it to good use, installing and resing ice, that's a nasty place to put a chum. Uh, in front of the Enigma, because what that means is if I run, for say, on the fourth click, I would still have to break the second subroutine of the Enigma uh, in order to avoid the chum damage. And of course, if you're in a situation where uh, letting you can break the ice behind the chum completely, it's a good idea to do so, right? For example, uh, so I ran R&D, and Hocus I Grid, I trash, that's good. Um, Let's say I ran R&D and I wanted to break Chum. Well, with Gordian Blade, that would cost three. But Chum only adds two strength to Enigma, right? So that only costs two. So I'm actually saving money by letting Chum go off, but I do have to break both subroutines of the Enigma. Otherwise, I will take the Chum damage even if I don't mind losing the click. So good ice placement uh, for him. Okay, Dirty Laundry Archives. That gets me the Dirty Laundry money, uh, Desperado money, and a Data Sucker token. Data Suckers are going to be helpful uh, paying to bring the Enigma's Chum boosted strength down. 
because it'll cost me two per run to bring its strength down, and I'll get one back uh, from the R&D run. So that's that's pretty good economy right there. Even with his mountain of ice, I've been able to get into R&D uh, relatively frequently, and I've still got a huge pile of money in front of me, I've still got a handful of cards. Okay, so here comes an R&D interface. Just one. I don't want to go too far. Uh, you see too many cards from R&D at once, you, know, you can get yourself hurt. And unlike medium R&D interfaces, you must access. Okay, so now that I've got the R&D interface, he's going to res that bastion. Uh, here's where I make a big mistake. Without thinking, I'm just like, yeah, all right, barrier. I'm going to use my self-modifying code, and I'm going to get my snowball. So I use my self-modifying code. I go get my snowball. Um, and then I realize, oh, shit, uh, that's actually really expensive. That just costs six credits to install that snowball. And that leaves me with not enough credits left to actually get into R&D. So I think about it for a while, doing some math. Um, even using the data sucker tokens, I just can't do it without taking some sort of damage. Either from the chum or from the neural katana. And if I were to hit a snare, that could be game over. I haven't seen even one snare yet, so really don't you know want to play that game. Also, my deck is uh, sort of running thin because <laughs> I've been drawing so many cards with pro contacts uh, to replenish my points from getting all the net damages. Uh, and also the cards I'm playing to install my rig. So yeah, I let the Bastion end the run. So I wasted six credits on the snowball that I didn't need. And you'll see why I didn't need the snowball in a second. Okay, private contracts is over. New card installed in the remote server. And he takes two credits. Uh, he took two credits. Why? Did he take one or two? I don't know. Did the pro contacts... I think he used a click to take money off the pro contacts, then installed... Uh, maybe maybe he took one more credit. I'm not, didn't even supposed to. I'm not sure. I had to watch it again. So I emptied Katie Jones, and I played Escher. So he's thinking about whether to res. He does. It's an enigma. Now, it's actually, I'm glad he resed, uh, because whatever it was, I could break it. And now, that's one more ice I know about for my Eschering. Right? If he left it unresed, then I would have to play a guessing game of where to move the ice to. So I moved the chum to the back. That saves me a lot. I moved the bastion to HQ, where I'm not going to run. And I have to keep four ice in R&D, so it's not that bad for him. Uh, I, keep, I leave the neural there, that only cost me one to get through. So now there's two enigmas. I made it a little cheaper to run R&D. It only cost me five credits to get in. Uh, so I then do run R&D. It cost me five to get in. But I get a Desperado and Data Sucker back, and I see something. It's an agenda. Oh, yes. I lost my infiltration. That's bad. Why did I put it near my agenda? <laughs> I saw another card. He put it back. R&D interface is pretty good. So five credits, and I get to see two cards from R&D. Not too shabby. And I've got a Katie Jones and Pro Context to replenish my hand and replenish my cash. That's pretty much what I'm going to do here, is just replenish, run R&D, replenish, run R&D. Okay, he's taking money. Whatever he installed in that other server is just sort of chilling out, unresed. Fine by me, I'm not risking running there. 
could be a snare on top of a Hokusai grid. Alright, I ran R&D for five. Saw two cards that I had to put back. See, so now I've seen two cards. If he only draws one, right, then I don't need to run R&D this next turn. I can just chill out. You know, perhaps fill Katie Jones again. Then, turn after that, he draws one or more. Then I can empty Katie Jones and run R&D. So that gives me like six clicks to replenish myself uh, in between the runs. Because right, I usually run on click three in case it's a snare, I can remove the tag on click four. Alright, here it comes with a sea source. What the hell? Jinteki with a sea source. See, my money was down from that R&D run, and he was just collecting money and not doing anything else. Uh, yep, he sea sourced me. I can't beat that trace. Two scorches. Two scorches into Jinteki. What the fuck? Are you kidding me? Well, you know, I even had Plaskrete in my hand early in the game and chose not to install it, even though a lot of Jinteki are playing one Scorch. I was figuring, eh, it's just gonna slow me down to install that. I don't need that. Yeah, if I would have installed that, I probably could have done much better in this game. Also, if I didn't waste a bunch of credits installing that Snowball, yes, I'm pointing out the Plaskrete I had. Um, if I didn't waste a bunch of credits installing that Snowball, he wouldn't have been able to do the Sea Source. I would have had six more credits uh, than I would, than I did have at that time. Yep, so even if I'd gotten R&D one more time, I would have seen two ice. Big deal. Uh, yeah. There you have it. Sea Source Double Scorch. If you draw it, and you're lucky, you can put that into any deck. Any corp deck. If you've got, you know, eight, nine, ten influence. If you're gonna spend all your influence on it. You can bring that weapon around pretty much anywhere. Always be on the lookout for it. Uh, another thing that really kept me not looking for it was I didn't see sea sources or scorches uh, during my runs. Uh, if I would have run HQ perhaps a little more, I might have seen the sea source or the scorch, uh, and then I would have installed my Plaskrete right away. So, you know, it's like I'm afraid to run HQ against Jinteki because he could just be holding a fistful of snares. But at the same time, you sort of have to, uh, just for reconnaissance purposes, uh, to know what he's got. Right? Like, if you don't see neural EMPs in there, well, maybe you don't have to worry about them. You know, it, it's not going to top deck them. Right? If you run R&D, well, anyway. So there you have it. Another game of Netrunner.